All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to another episode of Hey, Mr. Sotko, what do you think of this? Where I just take all the comments that you guys put down below, and then I answer them vaguely, sometimes sarcastically, sometimes very realistically, and um, and that's about it. But this time, you know, I'm going to throw some news in there as well because we don't have that many comments today, just 29. Uh, I haven't made one of these videos in a while. My last one was April 2nd. I've been kind of uh, sick lately. You can probably still hear it in my voice. I think today's the final day, though. So let's get right into this. Then we're going to talk about some news, and then I'm going to talk about Vergecoin again uh, because it has been interesting me lately uh, just because of the hype around Vergecoin and not necessarily that I like Vergecoin itself, but uh, hey, buy the rumor, sell the news sort of thing. So uh, first and foremost, Faison Ali. Hey, Mr. Sako, just here to say that I've never seen a YouTube channel about crypto like yours before. It's the best. Never missed any vids. Liked every video I watched, and uh, just you were the uh, just you were the best. Keep it up. It's not even about crypto. It's just your channel overall is the best. Well, thank you. I really appreciate that. Always love great comments. I always see your guys' comments. Don't worry. I mean, just because I don't always respond or something like that or give you one of these cool beans, uh, hearty like things. Uh, just means that, like, I'm not, you know, I, I don't know. There's just a lot of them that come in, but I read them. Hey, Mr. Sanka, what do you think about this, that, and the other thing? You know, I think about that sometimes. Oftentimes I think about what this or that or the other thing could be if I was that or this or, uh, I don't, I don't have actually have anything good on that. Uh, bullish on crypto. The market has been in a free fall for the past few months. It levels out but never gets back to where it was and then dips again. Buying now seems like a good idea, but it's risky. Where is the bottom? Every time I've bought in recently and thought it was a good price, the price drops more. Kind of depressing. I feel defeated, and I'm wondering if this is even worth the risk. Besides that, I love your videos. Thanks, man. So that's, you know, that's one way to think about things, and that's one way, you know, you should feel a little bit of fear because if you don't have a little bit of fear, then you invest in stupid things like uh, like the little Ponzi schemes that everybody's got going on now, and then they just immediately up and leave or uh, uh, lending coins and things like that because you're like, hey, look, I can make all this money. Look, everybody else is making money. Of course I can too. But that's just not always the case. So... Uh, it, I, you know, I don't agree with it. It levels out and never goes back to where it was because that's just not true. If you look at a long-term uh, Bitcoin chart or long-term crashes or the or, that I've shown multiple, like five times on my channel, the horrific Bitcoin crash chart where it shows all the horrific Bitcoin crashes since like 2010 and on, uh, it's oh, it always goes up. It's always been up for many, many years. Um, and it's just a matter of time. I mean, what one bear market was 411 days. I think that was 2013 to 2014 or 2014 to 2015, somewhere around there. So 411 days that there was a bear market. Uh, but then it just went up 20-fold and then went down to 6K. So it depends on how you look at it. If you're looking at the now, yeah, you're looking at a problem. But if you if you scale that, that back, you'll see that it's always up. Um, you know, I was investing, too, in um, mutual stock, and I had I had a significant amount, um, you know, just about six figures, so quite a bit, uh, but, you know, nothing, you know, no whale amount, and, uh, you know, I had an investor at the time, and he, and he told me that, uh, you know, that's just the way you look at it. It's just that it's, you know, if you look at it the long term, it, it always goes up. You put in 100 bucks in 1930, you're going to have a million dollars today kind of thing. Uh, it's just a, it's just a matter of time. So, you know, and another thing is that uh, where is the bottom? Well, we don't know. But if you just keep buying a little bit all the way down, every week or every two weeks, you just buy a little bit. It's called DCA investing, dollar cost averaging. And every two weeks you put in, you know, depending on how much you make or how much you can you can pay, like 50 or 100 bucks every paycheck. And so that means that if, you know, the price of crypto is at 6000 when you put in 50 bucks or 100 bucks, you get so many shares. If the price went down to 3000 the next two weeks, you, you get double the shares. Or if it went up to 10000 you get less shares. So you just buy a little bit every time. So whenever you talk, I feel like a sergeant speaks to me. I mean, your voice and style of speech is so military to me. In addition, uh, you talking about military stuff and wearing body armor. Thanks for your advice, Sergeant Sotko. Oh, man. NCO Sako. So I just had the type, you're all jacked up, Private. Got your Class A socks. Oh, whoops, I put shocks. Let's edit this right now. Let's edit this right now. Y you got your Class A socks under your boots. 
because your greens are all sent to the wash, aren't they, private? Well, you're going to have to write me a 500-word essay right after I get done jacking you up. All right. So, hey, Mr. Sacco, what do you think the 1% will play the markets until crypto loses its appeal um, so that uh, when they come out, they're releasing a stable crypto that will not be volatile, thus they will be then stop playing with the markets? They might be. Yeah, there's there's probably whales that are that are just loving the toy with the market, like a cat toying around a ball or a small crutcher that is injured and still playing with it. Uh, that's pretty much yeah. I mean, because if you got millions or billions, then uh, you you know you would just essentially pump the price of Bitcoin just by buying it. And by that pump, people are going to see that pump, and then they're going to put more money on it. So it's going to pump more. And then as soon as that pump is over, you could just sell, and then more people are going to sell because they see they see the dump. Uh, because you're creating such a significant dump and such a significant rise with all of your money that other people are joining that, right, and forcing it up more. Um, and then you can just sell it. You can do it over and over and over. You you really could. Um, of course, you have to be a little bit smart about it. You couldn't just, like, just sit there all day going, nerp, 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 but, like, you know, just be smart about it, but easily. Yes. Oh, yeah. There's no doubt about that. Um, but are they going to release a stable crypto? No. I think because there isn't a lot of money, in crypto compared to like the stock market is is why there isn't a stable crypto because the stock market is traded by billions and billions of dollars uh like every you know every hour you know there's just so much money in the stock market we all know there's just an unbelievable amount of money and then there's a lot of traders and bots at the same time so any kind you know anytime like uh Apple stock might fall even a dollar. A whole bunch of people are going to be picking it up because there's so much institutional money that they're going to jump on that dollar immediately, pick it up. It's going to rise it right back up. And if it goes up a dollar, it's going to dump. So the stock market moves much slower because of the amount of money keeping that volatility. You know, it, it doesn't there's so many eyes watching it that as soon as it goes down, it gets pumped. Um, not always. Of course, there's, there's, there's crashes and things like that, but uh, it, it, it is a different thing. So I love the long videos. Literally go Binance or GDAX and listen to the video. Cool. Background. Hey, Mr. Sako, what do you think about the idea that we live in a simulation? <laughs> All Times Conspiracy recently made a video about it. And the last bit of evidence is spooky. So All Time Conspiracy is a YouTube channel. In case anybody didn't know, I'm actually subscribed to them. But uh, I kind of stopped watching them because their, their stuff now is just like really ridiculous. Because sometimes conspiracy videos are just kind of fun to watch. Uh, but the idea that we live in a simulation is actually kind of... Um, it's actually kind of interesting. Because if you think about it, in the future, we'll have so much uh, computational power that we would be able to simulate... Um, not just a video game, but a universe or like a planet, right? So, and not just simulate the pixels, but you would be able to, if you had so much comp computational power, you'd be able to simulate the atoms and maybe even the quarks and what have you, the whole physics of it. So you could just type in the physics that we know, boom, 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 and have it propagate that. So it, that means that if I was living in a simulation and I'm like, hmm, I wonder if I can prove this. So I take my glasses here and I smash them into bits, put them in an electron microscope, and I'm going to notice it's all made of atoms. And there's no difference between simulated atoms or real atoms. So I wouldn't know. So in the future, if we have so much computational power, we'd be able to create infinite amounts of universes. So therefore, if you think about it, the, the chance that you're in a simulated universe because there's a billion simulated universes and only one real universe, supposedly, depends on how you look at physics, yada, yada, um, that you, you, by that fact, by that uh, discrepancy in numbers, it would be more likely that you're in a simulated universe, a billion to one, than you're actually in the real universe. So it's actually really fun to think about. But do I? Uh, maybe. Technically, statistically, could be. Uh, what about Q-Link? QLS. Yes or no? I don't know. I don't know. Mr. Sacco, Ether versus Litecoin for the long run. Uh, I th I think for for me I like Litecoin because I like it as a I, I like it as a currency. Ether though is much better in the long run because I feel that you know all the apps are using Ethereum blockchain ERC twenty tokens and things like that. And Ethereum has a bigger purpose than Litecoin. Litecoin's a great currency. But so is Ethereum to some degree. But at the same time, Ethereum can have things written into the blockchain and create applications and smart contracts on the Ethereum blockchain. Got to drink a little bit. Still not over my sickness. I would love to be, though. 
You are real uh, people. I like that psychologistically way. Keep up. Long video is great. We would like to watch more. Wow. I just blew my mind. Yo, Sako, what is your full-time job? My full-time job is... A lot of things, actually. I'm uh, I'm an entrepreneur. I do a lot of things. Maybe I'll talk about, you know, some of my more things in the future. I have some things coming up that um, sooner or later, you know, might come to fruition, uh, like as projects. And, of course, that's going to be on my YouTube channel whenever I would be able to talk about any kind of projects that I, you know, uh, that I might be trying to work on. Um, you never know. Hey, Mr. Sacco, 10 or 15 years ago, would you ever see yourself talking to some someone named Comrade Stalin in the comments about digital transfer of gold and hopes of a Lambo? No. No, I didn't. To say the least. Hey, Mr. Sacco, what do you think about Colossus XT? Uh, never looked into it. Again, uh, I, I love you guys asking questions and even about coins. Uh, because that's what this channel is all about. And you would think like, oh man, you don't know about Colossus XT. I'm sorry. There's, here, I got Verge coin up here and uh, let's just um, go to all. Wow, wow, wow. How many coins are there? Let's view them all. These are just the ones that are listed. Uh, let's see. Let's scroll all the way down. How long is it even gonna take? Oh, what even happened? Did I mess with the... Uh... Okay, so there's 1,566 just listed on Coin Market Cap. 1,500 of them, and a few of them probably get uploaded per day. So most of these, I don't know. Um, I'll look into it though. Hey, Mr. Saka, what do you think about this? Crypto markets are down, but there's still a lot of money flowing into ICOs. How come? Because uh, people are used to 2017. I'm not saying that you don't invest into an ICO in 2018, because there are some good ICOs for sure. Um, but uh, 2017 was the age where you could just throw in money into any old ICO and almost certainly make like 10 times your money on the way out. And uh, people are still used to that. So I think they're just throwing money into any old ICO so they can get in at five cents or 10 cents and then hope that it moons and goes up to a few dollars. Uh, don't trust Doug, uh, Doug Polk. Uh, his number one pick and personal hold in his portfolio is Bitclave. Um, yeah, I don't know. Just not a fan. Just not a fan of Doug Polk. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Like I know, like dude, like you sh don't don't get me wrong. Like I take so much flack for that, and then at the same time, like 50% of it is flack for it. 50% of people are agree with me. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not stopping from anybody from watching, but I, I just don't like Doug Polk. This is, his channel doesn't really teach you anything at all, um, and doesn't ever talk about you know like how to mine this or like how to trade this or do this or that. It's just a bunch of talk show. I don't know. It's okay, though. I mean, what am I saying? I mean, I got news and things like that up here, but I, I try to communicate more with the people, whereas he's just, like, standing in front of his computer, just like, I I'm just going to talk about something stupid. Uh, hey, Mr. Sucker, are you sure you're um, more of a Republican than a Democrat? I thought that for a while myself, then I realized I'm more of a charged Carlin left or right boot on the same disgustingly evil body comprised of selfish humans. God, I love George Carlin. I'm a huge fan of George Carlin. I think I've seen, like, almost every one of his stand-ups, even, like, his 70s ones. Um, but, yeah, I would say I'm more of a Republican. I guess so. Um, I'm not, like, diehard Republican um, because I always believe that there are some Democratic things. Um, so, in a nutshell, like, Democrats, like, believe in, like, big government. Like, they want a big government. They want to pay a little bit more taxes so that the government does, like, everything and has a lot of social programs and things like that. All said and good. And then Republicans are more, like, uh, they're a little bit more corporate. They're a little bit more like, hey, we don't need this big government. Let's shrink the government. Let's just shrink it all down. And let's take care of ourselves for the most part. But, like, even still between them, like, both between them, uh, it meets in the middle in, in the sense that, like, there's always going to be social programs, like people building roads, uh, social hospitals, schools, uh, power plants, uh, everything, water, sewage, this, that, and the other thing. Th those are all social programs, technically. Like, we're paying the government to operate those. Um, so I think to be smart, you need to meet it in the middle a little bit. And I wouldn't call myself a centrist. I would say I'm still more Republican-leaning, but whatever. What do you think about Centricoin going on right now while getting delisted from KuCoin, still selling on uh, Binance? 
Uh, Central Coin is a scam. Yeah, the uh, they got arrested. So I don't think uh, that coin will go anywhere. I would stay away from that coin. That souse. 2650. I don't know what happened at 2650. I don't remember. Should we check? A little, little ways after, but... Hey, Mr. Saka, what do you think of my channel? Mm. Uh, Crypto Zozo, your channel. Hey, man, my content is my save playlist. And here, Hillary is a piece. Uh, I don't know. Kind of, kind of agree with that. Sorry, guys. She's just like she just looks like that old grandma that like you know like mistreated you as a child kind of thing. Not that I really had that, but she just looks like one of those old grandmas that like are really mean or like one of those old like uh, really mean like second grade teachers or something. She just doesn't look like somebody like oh like I should I should vote for that person. That person looks like a really good person. I don't know. Sorry. Uh, no, I wasn't bashing your channel, Crypto Zozo. It's just that you're like, hey, check out my content in the last video. So I was like, all right, I'll check out your content. And you didn't have any content. But you have saved playlists. But, I mean, like, that's not like... I was expecting, like, your content, and I was going to check it out, and then... Yeah. Anyway. So, on to some news. So, uh, bullish Bitcoin signal suggesting uh, bears near point of exhaustion. So, you know, this is one of the uh, positive... Sorry, guys. I've got such an itchy nose every time I start talking. I don't know what it is. I gotta get like itchy nose syndrome medicine or something. But bullish Bitcoin signals. So this is, you know, uh, a bullish post uh, for you know uh, for TA kind of thing. It's like a it's you know like a technical analysis bullish post, and then you'll find ones that are really negative and that are bearish posts. So. This one just basically talks about how, and it shows the Bitcoin chart. It talks about how, um, you know, bearish movement is it's sort of dying off. As you can see, that it went down really fast. We we had we had a little bit of an upswing there, and now it's really starting to even out. If you look at it over a longer period of time, it's really starting to even out, and uh, things might be over sooner or later here. So. At the moment, you know, it'd be foolish to assume that Bitcoin won't revisit or potentially fall beneath 6,000. Um, but price action near 5,500 range would still confirm a general curve in a supportive direction. Uh, but if it fell deeper than that, then there'd probably be widespread panic or market manipulation that would be uh, pulling that, that trend down. So... That wouldn't be good, but it looks like we are starting to even off here. I'm willing to bet if you looked at a chart right now, you'd probably see a lot of doji, um, and we might be we might be moving in a sideways direction for a little while here, and that's better than down. That's always better than down, and that's always a really great time to day trade as well because it just goes like this all day long in a sideways market, and you can go up, oh, buy, sell. And while I kind of went down to sell, I meant, you know what I mean, buy, sell, buy, sell, yeah. You guys get it. It's easy. So Bitrix Exchange is back and it's gone. So after nearly four months of being purposely, uh, purposefully offline to new users, uh, uh, Bitrix announced its reboot, complete with a new website. Within an hour, the company had to cease again. So uh, in case you guys didn't know, um, it was, I think, uh, let's see the date. Yeah, it was, it was yesterday. So the wait is over. New users can once again register on the Bitrix Exchange. I looked it up. Uh, I think I seen this on either the Bitcoin or cryptocurrency Reddit, one of the two. And I was like, oh, wow, Bitrix. And and then about an hour later, sorry for the inconvenience due to an overwhelming responses from new users. Registration is temporarily paused. We're working to make the necessary tweaks and reopen signups again. So Bitrix, I don't even need to read the rest of this. Bitrix just it's like we're open. Oh, no, we're closed. All right, Bitrix, fair enough. So if you guys didn't get on there, well, you missed that opportunity for now. But there are many other exchanges, so not a big deal. It's probably like the last thing I should be drinking at the moment, but I already had it out. So so uh, these are the best performing cryptocurrencies of 2018. I thought this was a pretty good article. So none of the top 20 cryptocurrencies uh, have held their value this year, meaning the top 10 like uh, market, uh, 20 market cap. So Bitcoin's down 58%, uh, down 66% from its all-time high. Um, so there are a handful in the green, such as Ontology. So let's take a look at some of these coins that were the um, that are the winners uh, so far 
in 2018. So Ontology uh, is up by some 400% since its original um, its original starting price. It's at 393 right now. Uh, we got Casino Coin, Mithril, uh, Bitrent, Agoras, uh, IO, iOS token. I mean, uh, credits. Digix DAO is way up. Loom and BTM. So anybody that had these coins, congratulations. They're worth uh, way more. So these are like the least worst performers. Interestingly enough. So BCA uh, was only down by 97, uh, 99%. BOS, uh, Litecoin Cash, uh, which is down by 96%. That makes sense because Litecoin Cash, uh, Ignis, DCN, Digital Note, not that bad, Bitcoin Dark, but uh, pretty much everything other than these coins were the w w even worse. So... Um, I think the winner of 2017 overall was was Ripple. It went up uh, like thousands of times, so that was uh, that was definitely the winner of 2017 overall. Uh, but uh, on the balance of probability, if you'd attempted to counteract uh, Bitcoin's decline by switching to altcoins, you'd have lost and lost heavily. Ripple and Cardano are down by 84% in three months, so Ripple's doing real bad right now. And NEM has fallen further still. Unless you're a margin trading demon, your best bet is to keep the majority of your portfolio in Bitcoin and forget about it. When the curtain falls on 2018, it's safe to assume the year's top performing crypto assets will look very different. So right now, yes, these are the top uh, assets, but uh, it's likely that if you get in now, you're not going to see a 419% increase. Uh, because that was that 419% increase is, is from the original price from when it was released, uh, whether it be like the first time on an exchange or like ICO price. So you're definitely not going to get that. Uh, but uh, these are good coins to look into. Uh, the coins that will go up 400% throughout the year, good luck. It's sort of a anybody's guess. Every coin like pretty much considers themselves going to be amazing when they first come out. That's basically the job of a white paper. So... So Bitcoin's eating Quebec. Um, and I just wanted to show you guys this. Now, overall, this this article here is very, very negative. Uh, so it's just worthless puzzles. It's talking about harm to the environment, harm to uh, hydroelectric power and to the environment that that does. So all this stuff. But I actually just kind of wanted to read a little bit of this because when I came across this, this, this picture here is just... Wow, when you look at it. That's the only thing you could say. If you walked into this building and you saw this, you would. I think the first thing you would say is just, wow. Um, that's it. So at first glance, nothing looks particularly cutting edge about this uh, aging industrial park in Quebec. About 60 miles east of Montreal, the air is thick with the smell of roasting cacao. Um, and yada yada, so... Basically, these computers are the property of BitFarms, one of North America's largest cryptocurrency mining operations. Here in the once abandoned factory, about 7,000 shoebox-sized machines, ASICs, um, as of April, but that's expected to rise by the 14, uh, 14,000 by July, sit tightly shelved in a single floor. Th the, so this, before, uh, sorry, sorry, before I, I, I continue, this, this is what destroys GPU mining. This. This, this is the whales. This is why people don't like ASICs, like GPU miners, okay? So these are probably all mining Bitcoin. These are probably all uh, SHA-256. I would imagine. I'm not sure, but uh, I'd imagine that they're all probably ant miners or S, like S9. Um, and this is the reason. So, uh, you know, it, it was ASICs that really took away the power of GPU mining for Bitcoin, uh, and it's ASICs that are taking away this power for most. This is why that if you, if you plug in the uh, algorithm uh, on, your, on your GPUs, you know, you get a program for Bitcoin, and you try to mine Bitcoin with your GPU, you're going to notice you're not going to be mining nothing. Very, very little profit. Shockingly low profit for mining with your GPU. In fact, most mining calculators don't even calculate GPU power anymore. It's just in the terahashes, right? So your GPU would get nothing close to that. So you can't. And when as, as ASICs come along for different coins, 
that also removes that power from your GPUs as well. So let's say uh, some extremely powerful Ethereum ASIC miners came along because the Ethereum ASIC miners from Bitmain are not that powerful. 180 mega hash is good, uh, f- kind of for the price, uh, but it's not overwhelmingly powerful. Thing is, if somebody had a, a farm of them, like so let's say if these were all the Ethereum miners only mining at 180 mega hash and he had 7,000 of them, that's going to do severe damage to the uh, difficulty raising of Ethereum, especially if there were just warehouses after warehouses after warehouses of them, just like Bitcoin is now. You wouldn't be able to mine Ethereum on your GPUs anymore. Yeah, sure, 180 mega hash isn't much, but when he times that by up to upwards of 14,000 of them, you start to get a lot. And this is just one. This is just one warehouse of them. There are all there are warehouses like this all over the world. So the um, so uh, sit tightly shelved on a, on a floor, so 14,000 of them. So on one side of the, uh, of the stacks, emissive wires and, and routers uh, exit at the rear of each computer so it's exposed to the cold Canadian air. And on the other, thousands of identical fans roar as they push hot air past a heap of empty cardboard boxes and uh, into the otherwise vacant space. So a handful of busy employees move between the two, wearing thin T-shirts and jeans, their faces flushed even on a raw, gray day. The heat on the uh, fan side is stifling. So imagine a wall of just hot air coming at you, probably like uh, 30, 40 Celsius, something like that. Um, a lot. So hot, for sure. Just pushing on you the whole day. Um, which, you know, uh, most people's jobs, you know, you work in, in some kind of manufacturing or factory or, or smelting or anything like that. You've experienced heat, so it's not a big deal. But uh, this would be very loud and pretty tremendous. So I don't really want to read the rest of the article. You guys can if you thought it was very interesting. It's just an MIT technology review, um, Bitcoin's eating Quebec. Uh, Quebec. So, but it, it's, it goes, to, it, it starts to become very, very negative towards, uh, towards Bitcoin and crypto. And I can't help but to agree with some of it based on the power consumption of crypto. Um, that's why I kind of like proof of, uh, proof of stake. Um, and I know there's a lot of problems with it now. Uh, it's not very secure, but uh, I think sooner or later proof of stake will be the future because this this electricity, it's it's too much. It really is. So I think proof of stake one day will be the future, but uh, I think it needs a lot more work at the moment. So proof of work is dominant now, but uh, sooner or later. So Coin Cards brings Bitcoin Lightning payment network payments to Amazon. Canadian co- consumers can now purchase practically anything with Bitcoin instantly and at near zero transaction fees after a gift card merchant coincards.ca rolled out support for the Lightning Network. So pay for virtually anything with Lightning. A blog post on this website confirmed on social media April 9th sees Coincards, which has uh, allowed users to buy gift cards for major Canadian retailers with Bitcoin since 2013, permit Litecoin payments now for purchases uh, up to $25, which is uh, not a lot. The move makes Queen Cards, uh, Queen Cards the first major non-technical entity to accept Lightning and the wide selection of gift cards available, meaning for uh, for even items on Amazon and Newegg can now be paid for using this technology. So I guess if you wanted to go to Amazon and buy something expensive, you might have to buy uh, a lot of gift cards, maybe like, I don't know, like four of them or something to, or for eight of them or something to buy something that's reasonably expensive. So, um, you know, not really going to get into the rest of the article again, but uh, I really think this is a step in the right direction, of course, is these cards like this uh, that you would be able to load up and buy some big, uh, buy things with that like, I, I, I feel fine with that, you know, uh, because if I go to, uh, to Walmart or to, to a Fry's or uh, to some kind of grocery store um, or something like that, I can't just bring my Bitcoin. I can't, I, can't, I can't bring my phone and just scan, be like, hey, you guys accept Bitcoin? The, the cashier would be like, I don't know what that is. And you'd be like, all right, and you just pull out your debit card and pay for it, right? Even if you have Bitcoin. So uh, I think this is like a step in the right direction. I think whoever masters the Visa card and MasterCard um, and the whole chip scanning thing uh, and masters that is going to be the master of crypto, or at least is going to be an outright billionaire within days. If you can master that, and get support from Visa and MasterCard to be able to load Bitcoin on cards uh, that works better than others right now. Because right now, there, there are cards out there that do this, obviously, just like this. Uh, but they're not that great. And I would like to see it be implemented with your with your bank somehow, maybe. Um, 
you know, implement it on your current card somehow, um, it needs to be a lot easier. It needs to be easier for everybody so you can understand how much you have and how much your purchase is going to be. Um, so there's still a lot of work to go. So now Verge. If you didn't catch my last video, uh, I made a how to mine Verge coin video. Um, I've been mining uh, a decent amount of Verge. Um, it's not the most profitable thing I've ever seen. Uh, I think it's, um, you know, it's just about as profitable as Equihash, maybe a little bit less. Uh, but either way, you can mine Verge directly or you can use something like Awesome Miner and set up an account on Mining Pool Hub so that you can auto exchange your Equihash, if you're mining Equihash, or even if you're mining Ethereum with AMD cards or, or Kryptonite or anything like that, you can auto exchange it. <clears throat> My voice is quickly dying. You can auto exchange it to uh, to Verge and then send that Verge to a wallet uh, because right now the price of Verge is really going up. The reason why is because the Verge developers uh, keep hyping the coin and they keep saying that uh, on April 17th there's going to be some kind of huge, huge partnership um, that's going to make the coin explode and everybody. All the Verge believers believe it, which uh, makes sense because they're Verge believers already. Um, but either way, even if the April 17th comes and they say, oh, you know, it's going to be this, and everyone's like, well, that's extremely disappointing, and the price starts to fall, you just sell then, and there you go. Um, and it should rise uh, in the days coming up because it is the 11th now. So in the days coming up, it's just like Christmas. Everybody always buys the last minute. So everybody's going to buy in at the last minute. Uh, we might even get up to maybe 10 cents. Um, so I'm mining it right now. I'm gathering a whole bunch um, in case it uh, you know doubles or triples in price because of this news. And if it doesn't, again, uh, the old adage uh, of stock trading, uh, buy the rumor, sell the news. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time.